All right, uh, thanks a lot for the invitation and uh, for being here just after lunch. Uh, so I'm Abel Brada, and uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the Institute for Replication. Uh, this is joint work with a lot of people. Uh, one of the co-directors is also in the room, Fernando. I'm not sure what, uh, where he is, but um, uh, anyway, really excited to talk to you about this. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to justify why I think we need more replications. I think this is a crowd that's really well aware of uh, some of the problems that we're facing. Uh, this presentation is going to be mostly about economics, political science, finance, uh, social sciences. Uh, and if you just have a look at the number of replications or comments that are being published in some of these disciplines, um, well, they're just, there's just not that many. In economics per year, there's something like 20 comments or replications being published. Uh, so it's a very small uh, number. So when we started this institute, the idea was how can we actually massively increase the number of replications being produced, being disseminated, and hopefully being published. Uh, and the idea is really to try to move out of this bad equilibrium in which we don't have a lot of replications, and when there's a replication, usually it's quite adversarial and negative. Uh, and we're pretty sure that a lot of people are actually doing a lot of replications and those are positive. So the idea is how can we generate, how can we generate a lot of new replications uh, and hopefully many of them are going to be positive. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, about the definitions, but like in the previous uh, presentation with the score project, here uh, the two key things that I want you to understand is if I say reproducibility or reproduction, I really mean running the codes. And when I say replication, I mean something much more than that. It can be using new data, it can be doing robustness checks, it can be a myriad of different things. So when I say replication, I really mean something much more involved than actually just running the codes. I mean, running the codes, rep reproductions are very important, but here what we're trying to do is to generate actually replication, to try to get to the robustness and the replicability of claims and results in published research. Um, most of the uh, replications that we've generated so far are for non-experimental work, but there's also some experimental work that we're doing right now, uh, basically lab experiments and trying to generate new data in a new lab. Um, so the first question is which studies we're trying to replicate. Um, we're focusing on economics, political science for the moment. We're going to be moving to sociology, management, demography, criminology, and other disciplines starting next year. But for the moment, you just want to keep in mind that we're interested in political science and economics, and we're uh, looking at papers that were just published in leading journals. So for political science, we'll be top three published in 2023, 2022. Uh, economics will be top five, adding uh, some additional journals. So we're looking at papers that just got published. And we're trying to replicate as many as possible. And I'll get in a second to how we manage to generate new replications. So we basically have a huge database of all the studies that are being published for these journals. And what we do is we collaborate with data editors, with uh, researchers, and we try to obtain information about whether the study has actually publicly available data, or maybe the data needs to be accessed in a specific lab, maybe the data is um, only available, maybe only the final data set. So this is something that we document for each study um, on our website. Then I have this huge database for which I know that some of these studies are actually replicable. We do have the data, or the data is accessible uh, uh, in a specific um, uh, lab or maybe research center. With this list, what I do is I give it to a board of editors. We're not a journals, but we have a board of leading economists and leading political scientists. And basically what I ask them is that they give me suggestions of names of potential researchers who could be replicators, who could actually run the codes, looking for coding errors, doing robustness checks, et cetera. So that's one of the ways that we generate uh, replications. The second way is uh, we develop replication games. So these are events that we do each month all across the world. So for instance, last week we were in Vienna and uh, in Ottawa. Next month we're going to uh, Melbourne, then we're going to San Diego, Montreal, Tokyo, et cetera. And these replication games are basically a one-day event in which people register and I match them to other people in their field. So for instance, if you work in health economists, uh, I'm going to assign you with other health economists. I'm going to propose you five, 10 studies and you choose one. So this is one month before the actual games. 
And then when the game starts, so let's say you're doing health economics or you're doing American uh, politics, then you have your study, you think about like the robustness checks that you want to do or the type of recording you want to do for a full month. Then the, the, the game starts, this is the day of the game, and then you have a full day to actually do everything that you've planned to do. So this can be a lot of different things. So for instance, you're a team of, let's say, four uh, political scientists. Maybe one of you is going to take the code from R and bring it to Python. Another one is going to take new data, adding new years. Another one is going to be looking at the, um, all the years or cluster, looking at outliers. Another person could do something else. And then at the end of the games, after eight hours of coding, we finish the games, and then what we do is, well, we go for drinks, we're having fun, and then in the following weeks and months, you need to send me a report. And the same way with the previous stream. So when a replication is done, I receive a report, and this report pretty much puts everything that you've done, and you send it to me. And what I do is I send it to the original authors. So the institute is the intermediary between the replicators and the original authors. So I deal with all the email exchange. And it's very important because when I send an email to original authors, they reply right away. Whereas when the replicators send an email, usually the authors don't always answer. So the fact that we have this institute in between is really useful, and the fact that I deal with all the emails is also useful because then we want the response from the original authors. And we do not disseminate publicly the replication report until we get that response. It can take weeks, it can take months, but then we release both at the same time. And what's interesting is sometimes the original authors are not really pleased with the replication. Uh, they're going to ask for maybe changing some of the tone, languages, and so on. And then I go back to replicators, asking them for this. They might ask also the uh, original authors to change the response and so on. And usually this is one or two iterations of this. And then we publicly release both of them on our website or discussion papers and also on Twitter. Okay? Last thing I want to mention is, uh, so far, one place with 750 participants for the replication games for 2023. Uh, and uh, we usually start the games with uh, a song, and it's a lot of fun. So if you want to participate, uh, let me know. Now, um, the other thing that we're doing is the replication games in the first time is really useful for when the data is publicly available. But if you're an economist or if you work with data that is administrative data, you would know that it's actually really hard to actually have access to the data. Uh, to the data. So uh, starting this summer, what we're going to do is we're going to pay 5,000 US dollars to replicators who need to replicate a study that is done uh, using admin data. So it's going to be uh, especially key for uh, uh, studies using uh, economic data. Uh, we're also going to start doing lab experiments in other labs using uh, new data. Uh, so basically, so far, just to give you an idea of um, what we've done is uh, we've uh, started a year ago or a year and a half ago. We have 135 replications that are being ongoing or complicated. And now that we've finally received funding, we're going to be able to actually pay replicators and scale up our activities by a lot. Um, so who are the replicators? Replicators are PhD students, faculty, or researchers at the World Bank, IMF, etc. But for the most part, are PhD students and uh, faculty. Um, they can remain anonymous, so um, once they're done with their replication report, usually they remain anonymous. I send it to the original authors, and once they see the answer from the original authors, they decide whether they want to put their name or not. Okay? If they don't want to put their name, that's totally fine. We release on OSF. If they want to put their name, then we release as a discussion, a discussion paper. But we disseminate pretty much everything that we do. Okay? We don't disseminate only if it's positive or negative. We disseminate everything. The other thing I forgot to mention is all the replicators are invited to co-author a paper where we're going to be combining all the replications that we're doing. And we're going to be writing a paper like this every year. So this summer, we're going to be disseminating our first paper. And if you've participated in replication games or through the other streams in terms of replication papers, then you get co-authorship to that meta paper, even though maybe you remain anonymous for the single replication report. There's going to be so many authors that there's no way someone can actually tell which papers you replicated. Okay? But what's key here is that the replicators are kind of referees. But they're super referees. The paper is published, just came out of the journal, just got published. But now, as a reviewer with your teammates, you actually have access to the data. So you're able to uncover coding errors, and we've uncovered many major coding errors, many minor coding errors. But also, you're able to see stuff that the referees haven't seen. I mean, maybe in the paper it's not written that you're actually weighting your observations. But as a replicator, just looking through the codes, it takes you one minute to figure out that actually there is a waiting scheme. 
and maybe the results are not robust to this and so on. So as a replicator, you have a lot of advantage in comparison to what referee reports or referees are doing. We obviously have a conflict of interest uh, policy. The last thing on this slide is very important. We do not tell the replicators how to replicate this study. They're the expert. This is their field. They could have been a referee for that paper, and so they should do whatever they feel that is a sensible robustness checks or any type of recording or redownloading the data and recalling everything from scratch. They decide what they do and what is appropriate for, for instance, someone working with like time series is very different than what's appropriate for someone working in political science doing an experiment. So it's really important that we allow this flexibility in terms of the type of replications that uh, people can do. All right, once a replication is done, uh, they send me the report, as I said, then I send it to the original authors, and as I've mentioned, then we uh, release those as uh, discussion papers. Okay, so as I said, we're, uh, we've completed uh, 140, something like this, um, uh, completed or ongoing replications. Um, these are starting to be disseminated on a website, so if you're on a website and you're interested in a specific study, you can look whether the data is publicly available or not, where you can download the data, whether it's been reproduced, and whether it's been replicated, and you have access to this. And the idea is at one point down the line when we're going to be having thousands of replications, before you start a new project and you want to cite a specific study, you're going to look at whether the data is available, whether the paper has been successfully replicated or not. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Um, also, uh, I managed to put together three special issues dedicated to replication. So the goal is to try to publish uh, some of the replication reports for those that don't want to end up, um, that don't want to remain anonymous. So with uh, Kevin Easterling, who's uh, sitting right there, we put together uh, a special issue at Research and Politics, put another one at Canadian Journal of Economics. At the Economic Inquiry, the editor-in-chief told us that we can publish as many replications as uh, we want, as long as they're of high quality. So the goal is going to try to generate a lot of demand also for uh, replications. So here we're going to generate a lot, but we also want some of them to get published. We also work with journals trying to put together a replication section, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, so all these that are presented so far is achieved with zero funding. Now the cool thing is a couple of weeks ago we actually got lots of funding. So uh, now what we want to do is to massively scale up our activities. Um, so, Starting right now, our, our goal is to replicate something between 100 and 250 replications per year for economics over, or let's say 100 replications for political science. Then we want to move to management, sociology, et cetera, et cetera. So just to give you an idea for economics, this would be approximately 25% of all studies using empirical data published in the leading, let's say, eight or nine journals. So we want to get to a point where if you publish in these journals, you know someone's going to look at your code. And maybe there's quite a likelihood that actually someone's going to replicate it. So, you know, look at your codes carefully and maybe ask someone else also to actually look at your codes to make sure you didn't make, you know, some stupid coding mistakes, which we find a lot. And most of these mistakes are just by accident. But if someone would have looked at it, clearly you figure it out really fast. So we want to get to a new equilibrium in which actually there's not a threat, but just someone is actually going to look at your codes at one point down the line. So that's kind of the idea. Um, uh, the last thing I wanna mention before I move on to the, um, to the Q&A is we're really hoping to get at least 1,000 participants per year for the replication games. And um, if you're interested in organizing replication games in, for any of these disciplines at your institu institution, just let me know. We just need coffee and a bunch of rooms, to be honest. So it's really uh, low cost and it's a lot of fun. Um, I'll stop here. Uh, this is your institute, we're doing this for you guys, uh, so uh, if you need something or you want something or you need help, you've done a replication, we want, uh, you want us to reach out to the original authors, we're happy to do that. Uh, if you're an editors and you want to put together special issues or replication sections, please just contact us, we're happy to help. Uh, that's what we're for. Thanks a lot. Yeah, please, go ahead. Hi, uh, Dom Rush. I'm uh, working with Shirk uh, in Canada. It's a lovely presentation. Great to hear that you're putting so much work towards this uh, important effort. I was wondering, I, I know this is, this is recent, and so um, 
there might not have been as much time as, uh, as you would have liked to see or check the impact of the reports that you're publishing. But we know that when studies are published, they're often covered in the media and they can have a really big impact and they get cited. Even papers that get retracted keep on getting cited for years and years afterwards. I was wondering whether um, in your case you've seen that some of the reports that you've published, maybe highlighting deficiencies with some studies or a lack of replicability, has that had any impact, you think, on how these studies have been used by researchers uh, downstream? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. It's something we deeply care about. I'd say that um, one big difference between what we're doing and what others are doing is we replicate like right off the bat. So the, the study is published and we replicate like right away. So that's a big difference between replicating something done 10 years ago and you change the clustering. Um, so I think we're going to be able maybe to change the path in terms of citations that a study receives because we provide this report really fast in terms of whether the results are robust or not. The other thing is some of our replication reports have already been published as comments. So for instance, there was a case in uh, Top General Economics where 75% of the data were duplicates. We released this on Twitter and we got 200,000 views in 24 hours. Uh, the comment was published within a month at the journal. Um, I think it can have an impact, to be honest. Um, Excellent. Thanks. All right, thanks for that.